Coach is Rick Stewart of All Access Coaching. I'm really excited to bring you this free video and make sure you hit the subscribe and like button down below. It gives us valuable data as far as what coaches want. And also, if, you can, if I can get to 1,000 subscribers, I'll start doing weekly YouTube clinics for free. And if you hit the like and subscribe button, you'll get notified when we upload new content. We're uploading three or four videos every week. Uh, why run guard trap? Okay, so, so a few things, okay? Um, it's part of a system. All right. It's part of uh, it's not just a play. OK, it's part of a system. Um, we're going to run trap off of buck sweep action. We're going to run it off of uh, our jet series. OK, our jet motion action. OK, um, so and, and that's why I love it. Uh, it. It is it is part of of something bigger. OK, and it's not just a play. All right. So as I'm going through this, you know, keep that in mind. I, I feel like it, it's a little bit specific. OK, it's a kind of a specific topic, but um, Remember, it fits into a, a bigger series of, of football, all right? Um, it can be a home run type play. And for us, it's been our best home run play. And, and, and you're gonna see, I'm gonna put up some stats here about when we run trap. Um, it, it's a huge play for us. We've scored a lot of touchdowns uh, running guard trap. Uh, it, it ends up being, I, I view it as a home run hitter, okay? Uh, home run hit, it's, it's not, you know, it's not a third and one play. OK, it, it's a it's it's something that's going to be a big play. OK, um, so it, it, uh, people talk about traditional wing T versus pistol wing T. Okay? And um, your offensive lineman, if coach correctly, OK, they're going to get on linebackers quickly and you're going to see our guys. They're getting there quick. OK, um, our, uh, when when linebackers are taking the read steps, our guys are in their faces. OK, and, and you got to coach it like that. They got to get there quick. OK, and and it buys time um, to, to be in pistol. OK, um, and we, we did have to make a few adjustments because we went to pistol. All right. But um, I, I think the advantages uh, outweigh the issues that we might face. All right. I love the deception part of it. OK, um, and, and you'll see uh, our guys have bought into faking. Um, I, I don't know if any of you were in the last talk um, that I had, uh, but uh, we, we give out, um, we make breakfast sandwiches on Saturdays, you know, um, maybe half the, half the season. And, uh, we stress pancake blocks. Okay. On offense at least. And then we stress, uh, fakes. All right. Uh, you know, a kid might run a 75 yard touchdown, but you know what, uh, what, what, what made that touchdown bounce? It's, it's the offensive line and it's the faking and our guys have become unselfish uh, and, and they do a great job of, of springing other guys and, and they take a lot of pride in it. Um, and, and so that, you, you know, that, that's part of a culture that you have to create. Okay. Um, because let's face it, you know, the fans on Friday nights are yelling that you're running the ball up the middle. Okay. They don't know that the front side guards going to the backside backer and you're pulling your backside guard and all that good stuff. Okay. They just know you're running the football up the middle. Okay. So you have to sell it to your kids because think about it when they go home, OK, they're in their dad says, what, you know, what would you guys do that? Oh, we worked on trap. Oh, isn't that up the middle? OK. And and so you have to sell it to the kids that it's it's a great play. And our guards, they, they love it. They, they love running trap. They love when I call it. OK. And, and if you walked up to them and asked them what their favorite play is, they're going to tell you trap. All right. Um, we're creating great blocking angles. OK. Um, and, and I'm huge on this. You know, I coach at a small school. I've got some smaller dudes. And um, I want to create angles. OK, if we try to zone block and then do all that stuff, you know, I, I, my guys have good feet, but I'm doing it with 200 and 200 pound linemen. You know, I think our biggest guy this year was 230. OK, and uh, we ended up making it to the fourth round of the playoffs. So um, we've had success. And, and I'm telling you, if we tried to zone block, we wouldn't we wouldn't have the same success up front. Okay, so this is a four-man front. Okay, it's a it's a four-four defense. Um, they this team was pretty aggressive where they they wanted to walk their their outside backers up. For me, you know, I'm I'm absolutely fine with you if you're going to do that to me on defense. I, I you know, and and you're going to get the fans in the stands saying, "Hey, they got six-man front. Why are you running up the middle? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? You know what? If you have an outside backer that plays a second level against every other team, and now you're going to walk him down on the first level, great. He doesn't know how to play that spot. Okay. So, um, you know, if, if we get a lot of the, and I'm sure if you're a wing T guy, you're getting a lot of the defense of the week. 
type of defenses. Okay. I'm, I'm okay with it. We'll make the adjustments. You, you got guys out of position. They're not, they, these two outside backers, they're used to playing a number two receiver. Okay. Um, they're not used to playing stuff on, on the first level. Okay. So I'm okay with it. Um, all right. So let's watch some film here. So this is going to be, uh, this is trapped to the left. Okay. So uh, center should be blocking back. Okay. Uh, front side guard. Okay. So our left guard, he's going to climb to the backside backer. All right. Cause there's nobody to double. <clears throat> uh, front side tackles our left tackle. He's going to, he's going to uh, get to uh, block the front side backer. Okay. And our wing, I think he messes this up. Like he did. This is early on. Okay. We're getting buck sweep motion here. Okay. Um, if you, if you check out our, um, the front side, uh, front side guard. <clears throat> okay. He, he does a nice job. If you watch his escape. Okay. Front side guards. If you see, he, we teach it, we, we dip, we dip and rip. Okay. It's escape the backer. He's stepping with his left foot. That's the left guard here. Step with his left foot. Okay. So he does it. So this kid doesn't get hands on. All right. That's, it's kind of the same technique as, uh, when we trap that two eye. Okay. So he's dipping, he's ripping. Okay. Does a good job. Um, the, the, uh, looks like the backside backer is kind of flowing to the, to the, uh, buck sweep action. Okay. Here's the wall here that we form. Okay. Um, we form this wall. All right. And he ends up, I mean, it's kind of the, it's kind of backwards, uh, <laughs> honestly, but the, the fullback does a nice job of seeing these, the flow to the play. Okay. Nice cut there. Uh, you know, and, and if you guys were in my last talk, I talked about number eight. Um, he's, he was a pain in my, he was a pain for me as a junior. He wanted to catch the football. Okay. Well, we're, we're not going to throw the ball that much. And if you're slow, we're not going to throw the ball to you. Okay. And he couldn't catch. That was another thing. Uh, but I knew that he could block. Okay. And so he, he came into my, my classroom, um, the, you know, at the end of the school year and said, I want to catch the ball more. And I said, well, you're not going to. Okay. And he didn't like that answer, but I said, look, if you, if you, if you want to be out there on Friday night, your senior year, you better start blocking and not worrying about catching the football. And uh, the kid really embraced it. He did a great job with it. Cause I told him, I said, I could find, I could find other people to block on the perimeter. Okay. That want to be out there. I'll find a sophomore that's itching for playing time. Okay, so if you you know if you're if you're a wing T guy or you're thinking about installing it, get your receivers to block. That's how you score. That's how you turn 15 yard plays into into 60 yard plays. That's my opinion. Okay, um, so you'll see our quarterback does a decent job here of faking. I don't think he waggle fakes well. Okay, um, but you'll see our linemen are fast. Like fullback has the ball right now. It's in his belly. Okay, our linemen are just about making contact right now. Okay, and the ball's off. They don't even know where the ball's at. Um, okay, so this is, um, uh, okay, okay, so uh, backside linebacker, I made some notes for myself. Backside linebacker is close to the line of scrimmage. Okay, front side guard uh, has to keep his eyes up and ready for him. Okay, so we're going trap right. All right. Um, okay, so guard, front side guard. Okay, he's got to get to this, this kid here. He does a really good job. Okay, if you if you look there, his eyes are up before the snap. Okay, he knows where he's going. Okay, he's assuming this kid is blitzing. All right, um, the backside backer, so he takes a nice flat step. Okay, cuts off that that backer. Okay, um, our guard, you know, he's cheated back. And I'm I'm sure some of you see that, and, and I'm okay with that. Um, I like to crowd the ball. Um, when we first installed this offense, we were back way back, everybody. Okay. I like to crowd the ball a little bit because I want guys, I want to make contact right now. Okay. And I think it creates a little more of a physical mindset with guys. Okay. I've gone back and forth. Our coaching staff goes back and forth with this, our vertical splits. Um, I'm a fan, I'm a fan of crowding the ball now. I used to not be. Okay. But I like it because I, I want, when we gap block or, 
or, or we're trying to get to backers. I want to, I want to get to them right now. Okay. This play hits fast. All right. And we, I want to be on there now. I want to be there now. Okay. Um, my guard could do a little better job. I think, um, uh, get a better, a little better angle. Okay. I think he's a little too deep here. Like I want him right now taking his left foot and getting right off the butt of this, of the center. Okay. I want him getting his left foot. I want to take a better angle here. Okay. Um, you'll see my backside tackle. This is a good, good example. The left tackle here of cutting off that back, this, this other backer that's kind of sitting here. Okay. Um, we're calling this two in the box two backers in the box. We're not counting this guy. Um, we're not going to count him in the, in the box unless he's inside of that five tech. Okay. So our tackle, our backside tackle knows I'm going to go cut this kid off here. Okay. Um, he knows he's getting a backside. He doesn't have to fill here because our center stepping back. Okay. To this, to this, it looks like this kid's in a two maybe. Okay. So our center's going to step back. Our tackle knows he's free. Okay. And he's going to cut that backside backer, that kid that's standing there. <clears throat> All right. And, you know, it, and people that say this is a slow play out of pistol, I, I don't know if I, I don't know if I agree. Um, this kid's a, that number two, he's, he's a division one player. He's going to Kent state, but um, I've had kids that I, that's the only division one kid I've ever coached. So um, he's a special kid, but I've run it with other kids that are not D one kids. Coaches, I really hope you got some great information from that YouTube video. Again, hit the subscribe and like button down below. It gives us valuable data. And if I get to 1,000 subscribers, I'll do free YouTube clinics. And you also get notified when I'm doing those YouTube clinics and when I upload new content to this channel. Thanks for watching, coaches.